Hi there, I'm Dr. Michael Ann DeVito. I'm an HCI researcher, a transgender woman, and a content creator on TikTok. I'm here to tell you about how trans feminine people like me get attacked when we try to help our communities, how algorithmic systems make it much, much worse, and how we can help fix this issue through design. But first, I want to talk about one of the creators of my study. Participant 3 is a 27-year-old transgender woman with no specific media or advocacy training who decided to get on TikTok, throw on some cat ears, and start providing hope, health information, and a living example of how trans people can be happy and successful and goofy and loved. She puts a lot of time and effort into this, and when I asked her why, she said something I found to be heartbreakingly familiar. I was just so miserable living as a boy that I was like, fuck it, I'll take all the negatives and not have to do this anymore. And the fact that there were positives kind of blew me away. I wanted other people to be able to see that. That's why Participant 3 puts the time in, to help people. And it worked. She grew a huge community. She became a role model. She literally became the reason some other folks felt safe transitioning. And then came the slurs, the attacks, the coordinated reporting campaigns, the death threats, the direct harassment of her followers. Participant 3 chose to serve her community by becoming publicly visible as a transgender woman, and she used TikTok to do it. Her reward? Trapped in a morass of harassment, abuse, and hate speech. I call this dynamic the algorithmic trap of visibility. The algorithmic trap of visibility holds that trans people are offered algorithmic doors to visibility made up of affordances and features which can help boost one's visibility. Those algorithmic doors exist in a context where online visibility in particular is more important than ever for trans people. Online spaces and communities are how we connect with each other, advocate for ourselves, and provide material aid for those in our community who need it. The benefits of those spaces directly depend on folks who have opted to pursue the kind of visibility we're talking about, to take on the risks of becoming visible, to educate, to welcome, to protect, and to help. However, in the algorithmic trap of visibility, every algorithmic door to visibility is also potentially a trap. The traps are the design and policy decisions that determine what's acceptable. From the overall fact that you've given up ultimate control of who you're visible to, to a system that doesn't share your values, your sense of scale, or your particular safety concerns as a trans feminine person, to content moderation policies that don't count transphobia and transmisogyny as hate speech, and leave trans feminine creators without a useful way to report harassment and abuse. And yet, we keep posting, because we know those benefits of visibility are crucial. To keep achieving our goals in this kind of environment, we find algorithmic trap doors to evade these now scaled, far more dangerous algorithmic traps. We come up with strategies and tactics which we can use to avoid, modify, or counter the unwanted outcomes of allowing our content and identities to be mediated by an algorithmic system. And that strategizing is powered by folk theorization. A folk theory is an intuitive, informal theory that an individual develops to explain the outcomes, effects, or consequences of some aspect of the world. Here, folk theories are how we figure out how to navigate algorithmic environments, even though platforms refuse to tell us how they actually work. They're how we construct useful guesses and ways to think about what might be happening to our content and why, and how we start to think about how we might affect those outcomes ourselves, what algorithmic trap doors we might slip through if abuse and harassment start coming our way. To figure out which algorithmic trap doors we can try and escape through, Transfem creators start by building an overall folk theory of how TikTok forms audiences and distributes content. And here, mostly that takes the form of the expanding stages folk theory. This is participant 4's version of the expanding stages theory, which I asked her to draw out for me. First, the post goes out to your followers. If the video is a dud with that first group of viewers, it pretty much only gets distributed on the following page. It's time on the For You page is done. If the video does well, it winds up on the For You page of folks who TikTok somehow thinks are likely to follow you if shown the right content. Then, if you do well there, you go to the general For You page. You're at the beginning of some level of virality. Importantly, this version of the theory also asserts that TikTok frequently makes mistakes during this process. When TikTok gets it right, it sends you to an audience that is genuinely receptive to your content, that wants to watch, enjoy, engage, and learn from it in a positive, constructive way. It sends you to what most creators I know call your side of TikTok, where folks like you and content like yours is welcome. When TikTok gets it wrong, though, it sends you to the wrong side of TikTok, where there's plenty of engagement to be had, but it's not constructive engagement. It's weaponized engagement. It's harassment, hate speech, threats, coordinated campaigns of abuse, and false reporting that can destroy useful, important communities. 
This is how the trap of algorithmic visibility works on TikTok. In all versions of the expanding stages theory, trans feminine creators are offered a door to visibility. Make content that folks engage with and engage those folks in turn, and we'll make you visible to wider and wider audiences, allowing you to do more and more good. But there's a trap. It just keeps happening. If things go well for you, the system keeps distributing your video to more and more people like the people that are engaging, and that's great. But if things turn around on you and suddenly most of the engagement is harmful and abusive, the system keeps distributing your video to more and more people like the people that are engaging. And now that's horrifying and traumatizing. But transfem creators persist and engage in folk theorization along the lines I've described in my past work, forming folk theories like the expanding stages theory, which can act as frameworks for coming up with novel strategic algorithmic trapdoors. Let's take a look at how that plays out using comments as an example. Comments on TikTok can get very nasty, very fast, as Participant 11, a trans woman who makes content about being trans feminine and Jewish, illustrates. It definitely started with a few comments from more conservative people that got responses from my more left-leaning audience, and then it really blew up over the course of two days. And then there was a 24-hour period in which it was being shown to neo-Nazis. Fights started happening in the comments, people would say some shit. That kind of engagement really seemed to spur the algorithm on. Working within an expanding stages folk theory, Participant 11 thought through the situation, deciding that conversations not only drove visibility, but specific kinds of conversations with specific kinds of people drove visibility with those specific groups. That theorization then informed new versions of her strategies for moderating and responding to comments for both herself and the moderators on her lives. No more engaging with the trolls for Participant 11 or her followers, because correcting anti-Semitic transphobic hate looks the same as agreeing with it to the platform. Participant 11's folk theory of TikTok allowed her to figure out what to do to protect herself without sacrificing her goals. She didn't have to do something like turn off comments, which would cut off the very discussion and community that she's trying to create in the first place. So what can we do to help trans femme creators and other marginalized creators navigate and overcome the algorithmic trap of visibility? First, many of the problems creators talked about get much worse when distribution gets big and spirals far out of the creator's control or expectations. We need a way for creators to slam the brakes on content distribution when they see things taking a turn for the worse, without doing something like making a video private or deleting it entirely, which destroys existing visibility and often precludes future positive visibility. I'm proposing that platforms like TikTok implement an algorithmic emergency break that would allow a user to remove a piece of content from algorithmic distribution overall, or better yet, based on set thresholds, such as rate of distribution to non-followers. Second, most of the other problems creators talked about came down to decontextualization. Decontextualized negative interactions, driving distribution to hateful audiences. Decontextualized language triggering moderation systems to mute and block the victims of attacks instead of those who were clearly the attackers. We need better mechanisms for user-side contextual input into algorithmic systems. We can consider interventions as simple as extended input fields in the reporting process so moderators can get more information on why content might be something like hate speech in that specific context, as well as more complex solutions, such as a system of creator-side flags which can be used when interacting that will let a creator literally tell the system that their comment was just rebuking trans misogyny or racism, and not meant to be read as a cue to bring in a new audience of trans misogynist racists. There's a lot more in the paper, including algorithmic community, identity flattening, and cultural context folk theories, a discussion of algorithmic paternalism, and an extension to my folk theorization framework, introducing actionable and demotivational folk theories.